Welcome. Many people know various divisibility rules for numbers like 3 and 4 and 5 and uh, 9 and 11 and so forth. In fact, uh, in this particular volume here, I think it's chapter 4 or 5 or so, um, I go through various divisibility rules. And I'm often asked, is there a rule for the number 7 as well? Uh, there is. And um, it's somewhat unusual. And what I'll do here is I'll explain the rule with a couple of examples first. And then we'll get to the interesting question of why does this bizarre rule I'm about to demonstrate actually work? All right, here goes an example. Suppose I'm presented with the number uh, 1,940,372, and I'm wondering, is that a multiple of 7? Here's how the rule goes. The rule says, delete the last digit, get rid of the 2, but double it. Double 2 is 4, and subtract that from what remains. So 194037 minus 4 is now 194033, and ask instead, is that a multiple 7? I can't tell. So I'm going to use the rule again. The rule says delete the last digit, in this case 3, double it, 6, and subtract from what remains. 1943 take a 6 is 397. And now asking, so is that a multiple of 7? Can't tell. Delete the last digit, double it, and subtract. 1925. Is 1925 a multiple of 7? Can't tell. Delete the last digit, double it, is 10, and subtract. 182, running out of room. Now ask, is 182 a multiple of 7? Uh, I can't tell. I'll follow the rule yet again. Delete the last digit, double it, that's 4, subtract, it's 14, just squeaking on the page, and ask, is that a multiple of 7? Well, 14 I recognize as yes, and apparently my rule claims that means the original number must be a multiple of 7 as well. Let's do another example. Uh, let's do a smaller one this time. 562, is that a multiple of 7? My rule says, delete the last digit, goodbye 2, double it, 4, and subtract from what remains, and ask, is 52 instead a multiple of 7? I know it's not, but just, just demonstrate the rule one more time. Uh, delete the last digit, double it and subtract. I got one this time. That is definitely not a multiple of seven. And the rule apparently says that means the original number was not a multiple of seven as well. OK, that's, that's a curious rule. Why does it work? OK, the proof is, let's go into abstract realm now. The fact that the, the, it relies on the following fact. Uh, any number can be written, if I'm given some number a, uh, n, as 10 times something plus a single digit. For example, my original number here can be written as 10 times 194037 plus a single digit of 2. So we're asking, is a number of this form a multiple of 7? I'm going to do something very sneaky and bizarre. It's going to come out of thin air for the moment, but it will make sense shortly. Working with 10a plus b and asking, is that multiple 7, is no different from asking whether 10a plus b minus 21b is a multiple of 7. What I've done here is inserted a term which is already multiple of 7. So this is not going to affect my divisibility, divisibility question. If this whole thing is a multiple of 7, it must be because the part I'm interested in is a multiple of 7. Now why am I doing that? Well, let's look at the algebra that follows. 10a plus b minus 21b is the same as 10a minus 20b. Common factor of 10, 10 times a minus 2b. Now the wonderful thing about primes is that they have the property that if a prime goes into a product, it means it goes into one of the individual terms. For example, 7, if it goes into this product 10 times a minus 2b, 7 will never be split apart to go into partly 10 and partly the second. It either goes into 10 or it goes into the second term. Well, actually, 7 doesn't go into 10. So if I'm asking for divisibility by 7, the only way this term can be a multiple of 7 is if this part of the product is a multiple of 7. So I've really converted my divisibility question into the one as follows. If I want to know if a number n, 10a plus b, is a multiple of 7, I'm saying focus instead on this guy, a minus 2b. But what is that? Well, a is everything but the last digit. Here's a. And what I'm doing to it is subtracting twice that last digit. So to ask whether original numbers are multiple of 7, it's clear from the algebra now, I might as well ask, is the number with the last digit removed, but the last digit doubled, a multiple 7 instead. There we are. In fact, this trick is wonderful and allows you to create divisibility rules for all sorts of numbers. For example, here is a very strange divisibility rule for the number 13. I claim delete the last digit and add four times what remains to it. As a very sort of strange and simple example, suppose I was asking if 13, 13 is a multiple 13. Delete the last digit and add 4 times it. So add 12 makes 1, 
four, three. I'm gonna ask, is that a multiple of 13? Suppose I can't tell. Delete the last digit, it happens to be three again. Add four times it, I'm now left with 26. And now I'm gonna ask, is that a multiple of 13? Well, 26 is, that means it was at the beginning. Why does this rule work? Well, what I'm really doing is looking at a number. Any number can be written as 10 times something plus a single digit. And I'm going to add to this 39B. That won't affect whether my original number is divisible by 13 or not. That's already a multiple of 13. I'm still focusing on the divisibility of this guy. But algebra shows this is 10 times A plus 4B. Therefore, divisibility by 13 really depends on the divisibility of the second term. The number of the last digit removed plus four times that last digit. So there you go. Create a divisibility rule for the number 31. Create a divisibility rule for the number 19. You've got much power at your hands now. Thanks very much.